We need to talk about waste. Every year, we throw out a huge amount of stuff, about 2 billion tons. Let's break that down a bit. One rubbish truck load of clothing is burnt or dumped in landfill every second. I don't know how long this video will end up being, but by the end, at least 300 more trucks of clothing waste will have been dumped. And electronics are no better. The weight of all our binned electronics is more than the weight of all commercial airliners ever made. Food? If you loaded our food waste onto 40 ton trucks and parked them bumper to bumper, those 23 million trucks would circle the earth seven times. And the weight of all our plastic waste is roughly equal to the weight of the entire human population. I could go on, but you get the picture. We waste a lot. And it produces a whopping 1.6 billion tons of CO2 every year. To get to net zero, clearly something needs to change. And if we're going to change our approach to waste, there are two main routes, waste less or recycle what we waste more. Let's start with recycling. We all think, well, I've put my stuff into the right bin. Great, job done, right? But the problem is when we zoom out and look at the system as a whole. Take plastic, it's everywhere, even places you really don't expect it, like a tin can. Eroding the aluminium shows that this can is not actually all can. Even it has a plastic layer inside and we have a really bad record of recycling it. Since we started producing plastic, about 8.3 billion tonnes of plastic has been produced. About 76% of this has become waste. Only 9% of that waste was recycled. Actually, virtually all plastic can be recycled, but collecting it, sorting it, melting it is expensive and complicated. And in the UK, we send a lot of our waste overseas to deal with, about two thirds of it. We don't actually know what happens to all of this. And according to a report by the UK's National Audit Office, some of it could be sent to landfill. So not as squeaky clean as we'd like to think. And the plastic that actually is recycled? PET is the most recyclable um, plastic that we know at the moment. And um, even that kind of, you can only recycle it eight times. Eight, eight times. times. If current trends continue, about 12 billion tonnes will be sent to landfill or littering the natural world by 2050. Okay, that's the bleak but necessary part. Now we can be a bit more optimistic because experts around the world are working on solutions. AI robots are helping us recycle quicker and more efficiently. We found that bugs like common waxworms can nibble through plastic, breaking it down. And other scientists are using plastic eating enzymes found in fungi and bacteria. If you think about um, a brewery making your beer. So instead of putting in the hops, it's plastic. And um, instead of your yeast, you're putting in this type of um, microorganism that can digest it. Then you'll come out with the soup of monomers that could be used to make new plastic. So there are some really exciting innovations out there, but to tackle the massive scale of the problem, clearly something else has got to give. I'm not saying don't recycle, still very important, but what if we reduce the amount of waste we produced to begin with. So here's the problem. We've inherited linear degenerative economies. We take Earth's materials, we turn them into something we want, use it often only once, and then we throw it away. So we have to transform this system to a circular, regenerative one. Everybody needs a drill every now and then, but we don't need it every day. So why not borrow it and loan it from the library like you would a book? In cities and towns all over the world, repair cafes are popping up. People who are frustrated that they can't fix their watch or their phone or their bike or their toaster, taking it to a repair cafe where there is somebody who has a spanner or knows how to take apart a computer and repair it. But the circular economy cannot be left to those grassroots initiatives. It has to be taken on board by industry. We need to put regulation in place that makes it happen. So I have this drawer, right, full of old electronics, things like phones, which I end up replacing every two years or so. But why can't I just fix these? This isn't a technical flaw, it's not an accident, this is by design, and it has a name, planned or inbuilt obsolescence, and it's exactly what a law in France is trying to tackle. It's called the Repairability Index, and it rates things on how repairable they are, which encourages companies to make their products last longer. And that's not just good for the wallet. Extending the lifetime of electronics in the EU by just one year would save around four million tons of carbon dioxide. 
And that's the same amount of CO2 as taking over 2 million cars off the roads for a whole year. One of the ways that people individually have got hooked into the linear economy is through 100 years of consumer advertising that tries to convince us that we'll improve our lives every time we buy something new. We need to mimic what Earth has always done, which is reuse and repurpose and regenerate. And that's an incredibly exciting 21st century economic transformation. So clearly there are some major changes needed to the way we deal with our waste, but it could be an opportunity to rethink our relationship to our stuff more generally. I think that's a parcel actually. I needed this one.